Um, so, uh, where you all headed? To the safe place. This land of garage. With Buddy. Come on, you owe us, Tiny! Yeah. Well, maybe. <laughs> no, 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 no! no. Mm -hmm. It is the most important thing we do to pick the right voice for the right character. Bringing a character to life in animation is so dependent on the voice because that's all you have at the beginning. Behold, the mighty grizzly! Ah! <laughs> we rocked that house, didn't we, Boog? Put me down for a box of Thin Mints, will you, sweetie? Put a twig in the hole. That was not a compliment, maggot! Oh, Mr. Happy didn't go off. You're gonna get yourself in a lot of trouble, girlfriend. Buddy. Hello, Elliot. <laughs> Catch you later, Boog. When I'm drawing, I have voices in my head. I'm, I'm hearing these characters, what they're saying, and it's fun to hear the voices that I hear all the time going out on the screen and other people hearing them. I'm go to sleep in the garage. Who's sleeping in the garage? That's right, Elliot sleep in the garage. The big, incredible Mr. E sleeping in the garage. Huh? In our case, we made it a big point to really let the actors add their own flavor into the characters because really their voices are so much of the character. What we often do is we often bring the storyboards into the recording session and pitch the storyboard to them so that they have an idea of what the intent of the story is. So even just beyond getting cold script pages, there they've got the, the rough visuals. Then it was funny because Ashton's actually a pretty big guy and his voice fits perfectly down into this tiny, scrawny little mule deer. I gotta hide! I gotta hide. Gotta hide! I gotta, I gotta hide! hide. Can I hide with you? So I kind of came in with an energy of like, it was a little bouncing off the walls. Um, and then the directors helped me because it, you know, when I would have that energy, um, they always let me know, yeah, yeah, that's, that's the one, that's the one. I mean, Ashton is <laughs> Elliot. In fact, probably a fifth of the lines are Ashton just riffing in the room with us and us trying not to laugh over the tape because it was so funny. I, I really didn't know how to create a character for Boo because he was, um, he's a bear and all that. So, you know, I probably thought like, oh, I need to have this big voice to fit into this big body. These are my people. This is where I reside. Nobody's hunting this bear. So we wanted to find somebody who could make Boo funny, but still take him through all the emotional changes that he needed to go to because it's his story. He's the one who goes the furthest and goes through the biggest loss and the biggest emotional change. I didn't have to uh, try to, well, you know, project like I'm this bear or anything. I just have to talk like I'm talking now, but, you know, uh, do the dialogue you know, and let the energy work for me. Hey, 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 oh. Hey! Mm. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> We've got Deborah Messing as uh, Beth, the park ranger, and she brings a little goofiness to this character, which really uh, gives some spice to this. The character of Beth evolved along the way. When she was first presented to me, there wasn't obvious humor um, or quirks that were associated with her, but they made it clear that they wanted to explore and play and just sort of discover it together. Wait, he's harmless! Stay calm! Stay calm! <laughs> <laughs> you have Gary Sinise, who is this kind of buttoned down, really serious actor. And when he came in and started reading the role, he sort of approached it by stages and kept increasing it and increasing it until he finally gave a version that was really whacked out there. And he did this crazy laugh and everyone, that's it. And he went, you're kidding. You can say I'm in love. You can say I'm insane. But no one understands me like my darling Lorraine. <laughs> the air guitar, I think, became more of a thing. Uh, maybe I did it once and then they came back and said, do that again. We're going to do that in this sequence now. We're going to add it and make it kind of a running thing for for Shaw. It's a fun little thing and I think I think a great way to intro the character. This is McSquizzy stuff. Nobody messes with McSquizzy because that's me. 
We knew Billy just from Billy's voice and, you know, other roles that he's played. And he reads, and it's the funniest thing. He doesn't even have to do too many takes. Somehow he is McSquizzy. They video tape your face as it's, it's doing it, and they incorporate it in your character, in the drawing, your little idiosyncrasies that you have, you know. And, and it comes out, although you're a squirrel, it's got a wee resemblance to you, you know? And it's, it's, I think it's, it's dead clever. I'm, I'm proud to say that I, I thought I was playing uh, Riley, but it turns out I'm playing many of the beavers. Okay, ladies, this damn ain't gonna build itself. You owe too! I want you to cantilever that cedar on the bias down by the north end, you got that? The alpha of any herd that Elliot was from would have to be the most alpha of alpha males that possible that, uh, that fit Patrick Warburton so perfectly. And I think early on, they sort of dis the decided that that was the voice for him. Hello, smelly it. <laughs> I called him smelly it. <laughs> I find it amazing how they make these movies and how they put it together. It's all in the creators' heads. And we have no idea what we're doing. They just hire actors that are willing to make absolute idiots <laughs> of themselves in front of the microphone and just trust that it's meant to be in the film somewhere. Really? I heard you got hit by a truck. I, I was amazed to see how the whole movie came together because you don't, you just trust what the director tells you, what is happening in the scene. You don't see anything. You do it all by yourself. You don't meet any of the other actors. And somehow the whole thing comes together because of their vision and what they always knew it was going to be mapped out as. When I look at the movie, you would think that me and this guy hang out. We know each other, or we know each other's common timing and everything else. So I just think, you know, that's just uh, part of the magic that, uh, you know, that, that production, you know, brings to it. Hi, so, how are you? How you know, doing? this is the first time we got a chance to meet, man. I'm, I'm so happy And it's about on that. film. They they there are people camera. at home are watching it on TV. Hi, man. What's up, how man? How are you, man? I'm good. Good to see you, man. Good You're really good you. in the movie. You're good in the movie, man. I had Thank so you. much fun when we did that scene that we didn't do together. That for three years. That was for amazing. Three years. Me and this guy for three years worked together, and this is the first time we met. Y'all got it on camera, right here, me and Ashton. 